Hey, how's everybody been doing? It's hard to believe we're almost in the middle of the 2012 year. And Memorial Day is upon us. So I hope the holiday is a relaxing one for everyone. Uh, my brother is still fighting the good fight. Uh, he's even able to not use oxygen all the time now. So he's improving in that area. His weight is still down, but he's still trying to strengthen himself and put the weight back on. And and uh, like we knew, it'd be a slow, slow recovery. But he's still chugging along. So while I've been away, I hope everyone hadn't forgot about the transit of Venus. And this is just a reminder article. That's a pretty recent one. And if you don't know about it, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. That's my mom's birthday there, June the 5th, bless her heart. We're all going to witness an event that's uh, it's only happened six times before in our modern era. Uh, Venus is going to transit across the face of the sun. And it'll be 105 years uh, before that'll be viewable again. Whoops, we got a little high CPU. 2117 will be the year that will be going again. Uh, they hope that the, by watching this transit, uh, they can inform their efforts to detect extrasolar planets. And this orbit is a slightly different plane, so it occurs rarely and in pairs. Okay. And it goes, this, this is just the kind of his, history part of the article, it goes in to talk about the first known transit, and then the study of it, and expeditions to monitor the event. So, when Venus is fully in front of the Sun, it will be visible to the naked eye although one shouldn't look directly at the sun without an improved filter obviously but it will it'll be visible in some parts uh, it will begin about 304 on June the 5th visible in its entirety only from the western Pacific Eastern Asia, Eastern Australia high northern latitudes it will also be on NASA TV, many cable and satellite transmission systems, and on NASA TV's websites. So, it is a historic event. And, who knows? Maybe this really was a star of Bethlehem that they watched. But I know we'll be gone the next time that it happens. So everybody should pay attention to that fact and realize that it is something big. And it's in less than a week. And it's probably probably in our lifetime we're the generation that's getting to see it. So there's probably a little bit of meaning to it. Probably more than we realize. This was a kind of an interesting little article I saw today. It was just on MSN. It was about the Iranian uh, news outlet talking about a disputed gospel. It had been discovered, you know, 10, 12 years, about 12 years ago. And they claim it'll collapse Christianity. And it's got your highlights. Of find out more about the saint who wrote it. You know, who is the big biblical fi figure, excuse me saw an inscription at the gateway of heaven that said Allah is the only God and Muhammad is his prophet. So when you click these links to read the article you get some uh, well some different things. We'll go back there and look at that one here in a minute. Try this one first. Oops.
Well, we'll just go ahead and go to this one. Now, this is a, a little different descriptive article, I forgot. But it just talks a little bit about a passage from chapter 41. And the, the gospel they're talking about is St. Barnabas. And it was found in Turkey, in case nobody knows. At least that's what the Iranians are saying. And they claim that that text, written in the 5th or 6th century, acknowledges Islam as the true religion. And chapter 41 retells the Bible story when Adam and Eve were cast out by Archangel Michael, that Adam turned his head and saw a message on top of the gateway saying, Allah is the only God, and Muhammad is prophet. This text was found in Turkey, and it's part of a bust of a smuggling ring. Turkish authorities believe this gospel is a fake, written in the 16th century. So, does this belong in this is a question in any contemporary Bible? Okay. And then we can f find out who this is, you know, if you don't know too much about Barnabas. And you can find out. And what does it say about him? It says uh, he was an important person in the foundation of the early church. Mentioned fairly often in Acts of the Apostles and some of Paul's letters. He was born in Cyprus, given name of Joseph. The Apostles gave him the Hebrew name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Members of the tribe of Levi were his family. He could have been in the company of disciples who traveled with Jesus. If he did not know Jesus before crucifixion, Barnabas heard the apostles preaching very soon after the Pentecost. He believed in the power of the gospel messages to change people's hearts. He persuaded the apostles in the church. In Jerusalem, that Paul had been converted from a persecutor to an apostle. Uh, apostle first to understand the mission of a church would be universal. Argo argued forcefully that Gentile converts did not have to be circumcised or follow the Jewish dietary customs. Hmm. Preached in synagogues throughout Asia Minor. You don't really know how he died. There's a legend he was martyred in Cyprus. Let's see, our, our parish patron as a Christian was a foot in two cultures, a bridge between the Greek-speaking converts and the Hebrew-speaking Jews of Palestine, who were Jesus' earliest followers. He was this powerful example of openness and sponsorship of Paul. His life and feast on June 11th are celebrated. There's another little version of his life here. The Barnabas, at least for me, I've not studied him too, too greatly, but this has stirred some interest in me about Mr. Barnabas, because I don't know him that well. And so I'll be getting to know Barnabas a little better when I go in to research some more. But I don't think this is going to spell the end of Christianity. I don't believe this will collapse it. It is interesting what they put out and what they say and maybe even what they really think and believe. But so is the fight, which has always been, right? Since day one. Competition. Good versus evil. Belief versus disbelief. I'm right versus you're wrong. All those things still self-present today and ongoing. From the starvation in the Sudan 
to the civil war in Syria or whatever kind of war term they want to put on it Assad's still there isn't he? He had not gone the observers are increased in numbers and they observe don't they? But it still goes on financial collapse of Spain, Italy and Greece looks like it's going to happen or they're going to have to dump a whole lot more money into propping them up and they're going to want concessions for all the money they're propping them up with Greeks didn't like that they're going to yank the rug out sooner or later you know, we're coming into June we're gonna see what what transpires there some people change years the changeovers different calendars time is relevant so we're gonna find out where we're at because there's only six months left in this year now and so far it's a lot calmer than last year, isn't it? Well, keep your eyes open. Because the economy looks like it's slipping to me. Gas has went down, but there's other stuff going on too. Stocks are up, but there's still other shady business being done that can collapse things. But as we move into next week, check it out. I am. Earthquake wise, I already looked before I came on. Uh, the last, well, the last little bit of period of time. There have been some sixes, uh, but nothing, nothing real, real big. Uh, it was just one six here, I think a six point two. And then pretty well you've seen fives and fours and threes. So everything is just uh mid range to a little bit lower than mid range magnitudes overall for now. I believe I heard the storm on the east coast was not gonna be as severe as what they thought it could. It's gonna, you know, bring some wind and wetness and stuff. And as far as I know, uh, I have a brother who lives in South Carolina. Another different brother. And I believe he said that they was gonna slack up and it wasn't gonna be as bad. So probably just some rain and wind. Hopefully there won't be much torn up. So I'm a watching. I'm looking into some stuff into the Middle East at the moment. So that's probably where my next video will start out at. So how have each and every one of you been? I'm feeling more like myself now. Um, I'm pretty well rested and relaxed and got back up to where I was. And before all the worry about the family health issues began to start. I got one last thing. Uh, I'm finishing for someone. I promised them. Uh, I'll get that out there to you real soon. Now that I have the time. So I'm gonna go outside and check some stars out. It's pretty pretty clear night. I've been really been able to see some stuff in the last week or so. Did you see the eclipse? By the way, I did. I saw pictures. Uh, Unfortunately, that day it was, was super cloudy. And even if I would have tried, there was just no way. You know, just gray haze, white haze above. Couldn't see anything. But I saw some pictures and it looked pretty awesome. So that's one event that we saw. This is going to be a good event here. We had our meteor shower uh, a while back. So there are things happening, there are signs in the skies. 
That's all you got to do is watch. So I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.